I'm going to start with serious matters here, Bill. It's a thrill to have you with us on CBC. But for someone that spent years, you know, teaching kids about the planet across the globe about what was happening, what does go through your mind when you see some of those same kids now, many of whom are in positions of power, um, not taking climate change or climate action seriously? The people in political positions who are not willing to address climate change and are going to, as the expression goes, age out, which many uh, other of us would describe as dying. And then when that happens, people will get to work. But the question for everybody is a so-called near run thing. Like, are we going to get enough people voting and uh, insisting on making changes to the way we produce, especially energy? Uh, in time to preserve the quality of life for billions of people. There are huge opportunities. The big thing is energy production, where we get our electricity. When you're talking about energy in general, we're talking about electricity. Nowadays, people are embracing at last the idea of heat from deep in the earth, geothermal heat. We, if we could, in, for example, in Winnipeg, Edmonton, if we could heat our homes using heat from deep in the earth, then we'd, it would free up a bunch of other energy for uh, uses in transportation, agriculture, and uh, in general, raising the quality of life for everyone. And so I claim that science is the best idea anybody's ever, humans have ever had. And if we come up with a better idea, we'll toss it out and, st and start over, which is the process of science. Test it, toss it. Uh, see what happened, compare what you thought would happen with what really happened, and then start over. That's the process. So uh, uh, these big problems can be addressed if we all acknowledge that they're solvable and get to work. And so you say, how should science education change? Well, let's not, maybe not change, let's just have more of it. And you know, I say, you know, I'm a mechanical engineer because I like bicycles and airplanes, and we don't we don't want everybody to be an engineer, Marcy. That would be a, just the visual, the clothing alone would be very troubling. <laughs> uh, uh, but we do want, and we don't want everybody to be a scientist. We need farmers. We need people to build automobiles. We need we need lawyers. Strangely enough, but. Uh, uh, what we want is to have everybody have a fundamental understanding of the process of science so that we can make collectively, we can make good decisions for the betterment of humankind. What gives you hope in Gen Z and Gen Alpha when you look at those uh, upcoming generations around this question of, uh, of climate change and, and what comes next? What makes me optimistic? Mm -hmm. uh, if you have to be optimistic or you're not going to get anything done. If you think, as I say, if you think you're going to lose the game. You're going to you'll lose before you even get on the ice. You got, you have to believe that you can beat the other team. We have to uh, accept that we can do something about any of these problems: global pandemics, uh, extreme poverty, and uh, climate change. We have to ex believe that we can get her done, or we won't. And so, with that in mind, it doesn't mean you are naive or don't uh, pay attention to the problems. It means you uh, acknowledge that you have, that we have troubles and we do something about them.